Jerry Palm. Man, this time of the year, or really, any time he's crunching numbers, is a great guest, and we appreciate him. Jerry Palm, CBS Sports, with us on 365 Sports. Jerry, is, what is this time of the year like for you? Do you ever sleep? <laughs> um, it's really a series of naps. Um, <laughs> That's what Thomas Edison used to do. <laughs> like, um, just now the phone woke me up. <laughs> well, damn, yeah, we, no, we, we didn't mean uh, to interrupt that, yeah. No, that's that's it's, uh, it's quite all right. No, it's um, yeah, it's it, uh, not very much, but I'm kind of conditioned to it. Do you update everything basically in slots of the day, or like six o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night, midnight, or is it constant? This time of year, it's once a day, usually in the morning. Um, it's uh, it, when we get closer to Selection Sunday, that final week. For sure, um, daily daily updates, uh, you know, in day updates if we need them. Um, it's a lot easier to do that kind of thing when conference tournaments are going on and there aren't as many games on your random February Saturday when literally everybody is playing. By the time I get an update done, it's obsolete if I try and do them in the middle of the day. Jerry. Uh- Texas, you have in in your latest bracketology as a ten seed. Did that win over Texas Tech on Monday lock them in, or Tuesday? Oh no! If you're no. a ten seed, you're not locked. Okay. <laughs> no, not not yet. I've got I think seventeen locks, but I define that differently than most. Um, for me, a lock is, you know, if you lose all of the rest of your games, are you still in the tournament? That does not apply to ten seed at this time of year. Um, it, uh, it does apply to um, teams like Baylor, but it doesn't apply to, to teams like Texas, who, you know, Texas is still below 500 against the top three quadrants, for example. Um, they play both Oklahoma schools at home. They'll probably be favored. Uh, they have to go to Baylor. Certainly won't be favored. We'll see what they do in the conference tournament. But typically, if you're below 500 against the top three quadrants, your chances of making the tournament are not good. Jerry, how much of a ride is uh, a thin line is Gonzaga riding uh, right now? Pretty thin. Yeah, they have um, they have one win of any significance, and that's the win at Kentucky. They played a good non-conference schedule like they usually do, but unlike what they usually do, they didn't win any of those games except Kentucky. Uh, then they lost to St. Mary's at home. Um, they they played that their schedule's not even in the top hundred. Um, for, you know, in college basketball. So it's just, it's hard. Um, you know, if they have that, if that win at Kentucky is all they have when Selection Sunday arrives, I don't think they're going to make it. I think they've got to beat St. Mary's either um, this weekend, at the, uh, which is the last game of their regular season, or uh, in the conference tournament, which means that they're probably the automatic qualifier. Jerry, the Big 12, eight or nine will get in. Something like that. Yep. Yep. It's a, uh, yeah. It's, uh, there are teams certainly right around the cut line. Uh, we've already talked about one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot to go in this season. It, it doesn't seem like much, uh, but there's still, you know, a week and a half of regular season for the major conferences and the conference tournaments, and a lot can happen. And the thing about the conference tournaments is, you know, for teams that are looking to show they can play tournament quality basketball off their home floor, that is typically a chance to be able to do that as well. Jerry, um, draw me out a path. I just asked uh, Kevin Flaherty about this because I want, like, multiple things. Draw me out Kansas State's path. Oh, boy. Uh, they've got to win just about everything. Uh, it's, you know, it's funny. That's a team whose resume, if you just look at it, is better than their metrics, the net and Ken Palm, which are so heavily influenced by margin of victory, which is why they don't have a ton of influence on the – selection process um they uh they they're in the 70s in the net and the 70s in Kenpa because they have seven overtime wins which means you're not winning by much when you win overtime games but they're also you know a, a 500 team against the top three quadrants they still have two road games left one of which is kansas they had iowa state at home i mean it's it's an uphill climb um, they probably have to win out the regular season uh, before we really start thinking about them as a serious tournament contender. I haven't completely 
let them out yet. Oh, and another thing is they're not great off their home floor. Um, but, you know, two road games coming up, so they have a chance to fix that. Jerry, what are your thoughts about uh, the the coach at Clemson discussing the Big 12 uh, framing, basically, their net, their, their non-conference games? I've seen a lot of different reactions to that. Is that something that you've dug much into? Um, I, I don't think it's completely baseless. Uh, I don't know if the league collectively intended to do this uh, because not everybody scheduled the same, but about half the league has got at least seven uh, and some as many as nine non-conference games that are quad four. And I don't think you're doing yourself a lot of favors in terms of trying to get in the tournament when that's your schedule. Um, but those wins uh, can carry through, uh, you know, in terms of strength of schedule for everyone else once you get into conference play uh, because, you know, everybody's got a, a good non-conference record even if it was against a crappy schedule. But, you know, if you're one of those teams with a crappy schedule, and I think Kansas State is one of them, you know, you've got to make up for that in conference play. You can't. You can't be mediocre in conference and not do anything outside the conference and expect to make the NCAA tournament. So you're taking a chance that you can be good enough in conference when you take non-conference off uh, to be get selected for the NCAA tournament, and that's that's a risky thing. Jerry, your one seeds right now are UConn, Purdue, Houston, and UNC, and uh, of those of those four, um, three of them I, I just can't see a scenario where they're not one seeds and have to be really, really bad down the stretch. Yeah. Who of, yeah. among your two seeds of Kansas, Tennessee, Marquette, and Arizona could take North Carolina's spot the best? Yeah, uh, you're right about the top three. They could lose twice, mm. each of them, and they're still the top three teams in the bracket. Um, but Carolina, Arizona, Tennessee, Marquette, to me, are the ones that have the best chance to get that fourth number one Tennessee probably has an advantage because of the schedule they have left. They just picked up a quad one win last night against Auburn. They have three more uh, quad one wins, and, and not all quad one wins are the same. You know, Some are definitely better than others, uh, but all of theirs are good. Then they get into their conference tournament. If they win that, it's going to be hard to deny Tennessee, even if Arizona and North Carolina uh, win out. Uh, the, the real threat, I suppose, to that would might be Marquette because Mar- Marquette still has UConn at home. And if they were to win the Big East tournament, they'd probably beat UConn again. Baylor has Kansas at home, Texas at home, and then they play at Tech, and they're right now riddled with uh, the injury with their big guy inside, and, of course, not a good effort against Texas. Can they get any higher than a three seed? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think a one is a, would be a stretch. But a two, certainly, yeah. Um, they're going to have to play well down the stretch of this season. Obviously, um, there are – two Big 12 teams ahead of them, and Iowa State right there with them. So it's a very competitive situation among the Big 12 teams in that part of the bracket. And Houston's almost certainly going to be a one, uh, but Kansas, Baylor, Iowa State, I would say are all in play to be twos. And if things go well, you could have more than one of them on the two line. Can they be below a four? Can they, like, go into a free fall and knock themselves Mm. out of a four? Yeah, they could. I mean, because once you start to go down the bracket, the teams are are more closely together in terms of the quality of their resume. So, yeah, they lose three in a row here or something. They could find themselves as a five. Um, But it depends on what other teams do. Jerry, are you surprised at the chasm between the top teams in the ACC and the rest of that league, which is classically a really good deep league? Yeah, the depth of that league has really been – surprising this year um although i think some were predicting that might be the case uh but yeah it's just it's weird to see that you know that the ACC isn't going six seventeen deep in the ncaa tournament this year and, and, and in fact they might be fortunate to do you know better than four um it, it's really been a weird year cause it's hard to resume bill then once you get in the league there's really only three teams you can play and beat that help you and that makes it really hard to resume build because every other game is just a potential, you know, pitfall as you're trying to build an NCAA tournament resume. Jerry, last thing, you said we woke you up and you do have little, like, naps <laughs> along the way. How often would you guess how many college coaches text you a day right now? Actually, I very rarely hear from a coach oh, okay. uh, this time of year. 
I may occasionally hear from an ops guy, um, but it, I don't hear from coaches very often. Um, but because uh, they're just they're too busy, coaches are too busy. Uh, but I might hear from an ops guy, um, and there's a few that that'll reach out. Thank you for your time, Jerry. I know it's uh, always busy. Uh, Jerry Palm, CBS Sports, crunching the numbers, helping us out with.